we, your buddy? All, we, all Australians, we all Are know you in a group other. chat? Who else is on it? Hemsworth, Naomi Watts. I've only, I've met, I've met, I've met, I've met. Uh, all three Hemsworths, but we're not mates. Luke? But I've, I've, met, I've met Luke. I've met them all. Lucky. Man. Now that's someone I'd like to meet. Luke's all right, man. Yeah. Luke's a nice guy. <laughs> the undercover Hemsworth. Yeah, Luke, <laughs> Luke's up for is a Luke, good time. Is Luke, is Luke the one that was dating or married to Miley Cyrus? No, he's no, the Liam. non entertainment Liam. guy. Liam. 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 Luke's the, the short. Was, we started. Is this the podcast? yeah? Let's oh, do okay, it. Fine. I'll, okay. I'll enter you <laughs> after our Hemsworth <laughs> contingent. But but I no, I've uh, I've I've met them at different functions. Australia. Australian y type things. There's like mm. these Australians in Hollywood functions <laughs> where Australian more. where Australian actors get together and they all go on about the struggle and you know how <laughs> Oh, it's like uh, us as Jews. Yeah. We yeah, do it too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, like coming over here and I only had a few connections and you know and, and it's like you're really fing good looking, man. You know, there's no there's no Australian comedian support group out there, you know, and all the actors <laughs> They give out awards and they tell stories about the. And I remember it was raining and uh, Heath Ledger just. It, all the workers were grabbing cameras to bring him in from the rain and Heath went out and helped. And I looked at him and said, What are you doing, Heath? Get back to your trailer. And he goes, No, we're an actor. That's what we do. And I thought, Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> but, it, like, there's an Australian actor voice. There's a there's, – okay, so they all go to NIDA, the National Institute of Dramatic Art, right? Yeah, yeah. And you're an actor. Tell right? me. You're, yeah. Oh, this is great. A, you're an actor. You know – and I try to give it a go myself where mm. when I can, right? You know we're all a bunch of performers. We're pretty light on our feet group of people when sure. it comes down to it, right? But then the Australian actors are all like, yeah, how you going? Oh, I'm, I'm big, tough sort of. There's an Australian actor voice – that's deep in the register that no one really speaks like except for Australian actors. So I'm watching Extraction with my wife and uh, it was, mother, it was mother, his father's day it came out, Extract. And so it's, it's, you know, it's just John Wick but with an Australian, right? Just being, yeah, Hemsworth. And, and Hemsworth comes in, he goes, I'm here to extract somebody and I've got to do this and I've got to do that, <laughs> right? And I'm going to blah, da, 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 da. And my wife... I leave the room, I go to the bathroom, I come back, my wife's sitting next to her friend and she turns to her and she says this exact sentence. She goes, the Australian accent has never done it for me before, but on him. <laughs> right? And I was like this, oh, so you, you want me to talk like this, do you? And then we laughed and moved on with our day. Cut to me being in bed that night. Me and my wife about to have sex. My wife asked me to do the Chris Hemsworth voice. And how'd it go? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I f my wife like this <laughs> the entire time. Like, there you yeah. go. Here we go. We're going to have a go now. Like that. Afterwards, my, my wife always just tells me to be quiet. Yeah, well, of course, <laughs> shut up, if, will you, Josh? If you can do the voice, you would, it's you know, true. She, she never wants me you to talk learn with the Chris Hemsworth. She never That's wants me to is, talk Josh. with the Jim Jeffries voice. Yeah, I she, sound like a twelve-year-old with emphysema, anyway. So she's like, "Can you just keep it to yourself?" So after we have sex, after we have sex, she says to me, "She goes, if you can talk like that, why don't you talk like that all the time?" Oh, good point. And I know this. Like sometimes when you hear someone who's impersonated, they can like like uh, I saw a female impersonator the other day did a very good Marilyn Monroe, like a spot on one, not like the Happy Birthday, Mr. President one, but the talking voice. And you, you do as a man go, oh yeah, there's a fun voice to yeah, hear. You know what I mean? Lovely, lovely. Yeah, yeah. We, and then, but then why don't you do it all the time? <laughs> the Hemsworth. Well, really quick, we have the great Jim Jeffries oh, here, thank brilliant you, thank comedian. You. Just, so so lucky to have you. Thank you for coming. Thanks on. for having me, man. You know, I um I played. Chris Chris Hemsworth's brother in a movie. I met Chris uh, once. I met Liam a couple of times, yeah. and both of them super. And I met Luke once. At, uh, I met Luke once at, uh, at the premiere for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and he was just like he he had a few drinks in him, and his tie was a little bit off kilt, uh -huh. right? And it, but he was still like, "This is awesome, eh? Hollywood." <laughs> Like, oh, I yeah, love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they're from <laughs> Phillip Island. In Phillip Island. I've talk I talked about this on a podcast just recently. This is so weird. Um, Phillip Island has these things called fairy penguins, right? Interesting. It's so weird. This is like just last week. I, I, why would I ever bring this up? Okay, so fairy penguins, uh, and people think that I'm saying furry. I'm saying fairy, right? Sure. And they're penguins that are a little bit bigger than a Star Wars um, action figure. What are we talking? Let's do the scale here. Tell me when to stop. I, I might be at someone Google this, but as I remember them as a child, I, I want to say they're four inches. 
Maybe. And uh, maybe it may and maybe a Star Wars figure's like Marshall, three inches. Will you Google that? A fairy penguin. And they only exist in in uh Our dreams. Phillip Island. Yes. And they come out at sunset and uh at sunset and they waddle up to the beach and there's bleachers there and people from all over the world come and sit uh, they only come to this island to look at this this thing and they sit there on the bleachers and they there they are little tiny fig <gasps> little tiny the, the, the smallest penguins you've ever seen adorable I guess wow they're, uh, they're 36 to 46 centimeters so 13 to 15 oh okay so they're a lot bigger when i was a kid i remember them Fair. being like this so about, but, about a foot but they're little itty bitty oh. fellas yes right um, anyway, so they, they wander out, they waddle out, they come out, they come out, the sun's setting, they come out, and everyone just, ooh, ah. And there's always sort of like a park ranger type person who stands on the beach and goes, all right, boys and girls, they're about to come out. Here they come. <laughs> now now you'll notice, oh, he, oh this one's a, got, got a baby in its belly. Ooh, oh, no, they wow. probably have f***ing eggs. What am I talking about, babies and bellies? They're <laughs> Eggs, they're, yeah, they're, they're marsupials. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, so I I met Liam and I said to him, I said, "Oh, where are you from?" And he goes, "I'm from Phillip Island." And he goes, "Me?" I he goes, "I used to do the job of of narrating the penguins coming out of the water." And he goes, "Chris had the job before it, and he gave it to me." Right, because wow. you know how you have a paper round, you can pass it on to your brother or something like that, right? Feels like it should be like Morgan Freeman. Coming out like yeah, but, 85, now coming out of the water. But can you imagine <laughs> those three brothers living on this little island that's a very small, pop, very small population? It must have, when they left, it must have been like that scene out of Don Juan de Marco where Johnny Depp's on the boat and all the women are crying <laughs> and they're yeah. all just, just waving. Like, like, I reckon there must have been women who went and saw the fairy penguins several times because Luke was presenting them. I, I just couldn't believe when I worked with Chris and this is like, he hadn't even done Thor yet. Right. right? So he was still a civilian. Like yeah. he was still of, of the human kind, not, mm. not a God. And he was so handsome yeah. and so nice. He and is like, stupidly handsome. And you meet like these handsome movie stars and then you, you go, Oh, you're a squeak. You're five, six. Yeah. I could throw you in the ceiling. No, man. he's like six, two, right? <laughs> he, he, he's six, four. Oh, okay. He's bigger. Scul wow. Sculpted. Mm. And just like, effortlessly like he's a dude and i wonder what do you think jim and, and i want to hear what you think ben as well i feel like the renaissance or like the great sort of decade and a half of the the australian male actor with the voice mm. was sort of like we what it, sta had, it started with mel gibson but what had become on trend i feel like was a bit more of like a feminized metro american actor and like uh, this, cowboys this, this, came from this, the outback. Okay, so I had a sitcom back in the day called Legit, and I Carrie Fisher did an episode of the sitcom where sure. she played a casting agent, and I took uh, uh, the dialogue that I wrote for her was directly from a conversation that I had with a casting person when I was doing some generals when I first got to America. Yeah, and she was just like this. She was like, she was like, oh, "You're Australian. I like that. They're real men." <laughs> she goes these, she goes these british guys they come over their hands are failing around like this russell brand the women seem to like him i don't get it right. i don't get it that's what like she was saying she goes she goes and she was a jewish lady and she goes she goes she goes mel gibson I know he said some horrible things, but in his day, oy vey. <laughs> <laughs> Clip it. Clip it. <laughs> you know what? We, we, one thing you could say about us Jews, we are forgiving. Sorry, go for it, yes. Ben. <laughs> go, Ben. No, Josh, didn't we get a speak pipe recently that said that there were five times the women to men in Australia? We did, yeah. And her name mm. was uh, Peta. Peter. Peter. Is that, is that a, Peter. Peter. But it can be a female name too. No, Peter. P Peter. P E T A is the is the girl's name. God. I got I got I got an uncle who had. I th he must have wanted. He must have wanted sons, but he had four daughters, uh -huh. and they've all got like boys' names. Rick. Peter. <laughs> Peter. Tony. Marty. And Gina. So Gina's not, but Peter, Tony, and Marty. 
Interesting. And uh, yeah, so, so but, but yeah, this is, I, I like unisex names. I got a little boy called Charlie. Ma- we were going we were Mar- to. Marty's not that unisex. Charlie's unisex. <laughs> Marty's mean. Yeah, Mar- yeah, this, yeah. Is, this is my daughter, Marty. It's short, it's short for Marvin. That's tough. It's my daughter, Marvin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, I still hang out with Marty. Marty comes to me, shows, if you listen to this, Marty, I think your name's lovely. I love it too. <laughs> We all need luggage, right? We've all been there where you're trying to fit everything into your luggage for your trip. And you're just like, why don't I ever invest in good luggage? Or why do I overpay for luggage that just does not hold up? But that's where a base comes in, okay? There's always gonna be room for everything, whether it's an extra pair of shoes or 15 pairs of underwear. I don't know how you roll. But look, base was created by actress Shay Mitchell, a friend, I love her. I've hung out with her before, good, good people. but. But that does not influence how much I love Base, just because I know she's nice. Look, she wanted to make sleek and affordable bags, luggage and accessories designed to help you travel effortlessly. And when I tell you it's effortless, it's effortless. It's also like good looking, it's made well. For me, what I wanted in my luggage is something that like doesn't stick out, but is just an old workhorse. I also though, you know, I just want it to look sleek and like timeless. And that's what Base is. Look, Every piece is made to look better with miles. So you don't have to worry about it in cargo or overhead. And base is over 30,000 five-star reviews. Their luggage comes in multiple sizes and colors. So you will be totally covered. And their shorter trips, the weekender bag is super functional. I have one, love it. So right now, base is offering our listeners 15% off your first purchase by visiting basetravel.com slash good guys. Go to basetravel.com slash good guys for 15% off your first purchase. That's B-E-I-S travel.com slash good guys. On the, in the New York Post, there's a new weight loss pill that helps shed weight twice as fast as Ozempic. The no. new weight loss pill made by Norvo Nordisk, shout out, the manufacturer of mm. Ozempic and Wagovi, helps patients shed weight twice as fast as the blockbuster injections that the company recently announced. Yeah, but the problem with the injections is once you stop, you, you just, you, you're going to get it back. But you, maybe, you, so, so yeah, you, never, but you, don't, never yeah, but you don't have to ever stop. Josh, did you watch Oprah's <laughs> doc last night? <laughs> Which doc? Did you watch Oprah's special last night on Ozempic on mm. on ABC? I know you told me to, but but say more. Was, I, I did. Was I'm, Oprah pro or against? Very, very pro. Very oh, pro. Was she? Very pro. And I and I can tell you, I am somebody that's been on it. I've lost seventy pounds, and I can vouch for how great it is. But uh, Oprah was very, very pro. Like a couple of weeks ago, she gave all of her shares and Weight Watchers away so she could do this special and talk about it. And anything that says that you're losing weight twice as fast, though, Josh, as Ozempic, you can't lose weight faster. Like that is that is something crazy. Yeah, Novo yeah. Nordisk, though, they're the company. Like if they're if they're selling it, I mean they're yeah. they're the creators of Ozempic, I think, and Manjaro. So how safe uh, is it? I I think it's as safe as anything like it's, look, it's look, very it's, it's very it's, safe it's probably safer than being morbidly obese that sure. that's right. the that's that's really what they were talking about like there's of course risks in taking anything but are the risks worse than diabetes heart attacks high blood pressure like the the pros and cons and then it seems based on all the studies that they've done over the last 20 years for diabetics that the drug is safe to take forever and yeah, so the yeah. idea like, oh, you'll gain it back when you go off it. Yeah, you'll also become crazy again when you go off of whatever pills you're taking for mental illness or you'll right, get your but, ADD back when you stop taking Vyvanse or AD or you know what I mean? But, like don't, but, but do you keep losing weight if you're on it forever? <laughs> yeah. And then he became a, a void of space. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like he went out to, <laughs> then he became a black, a star. black mass. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like yeah. you have to like- I, yeah, you you would need you would need to taper off to a point where you're not losing weight, you're just maintaining. So right, you're, well, you're not... I'll, I'll, I'll be straight up with you. I tried it for a month. I didn't enjoy it because hmm. okay, I I I see how it works, right? And I see how I could have fought through it. But I'm all right with fasting and all that stuff. But I did it for a month. But one of okay, I've given up smoking. I've given up alcohol. I've given up drugs. One of my favorite things in the world is to get high and smash food, man. Yeah. Just yep. really yep. just smash it. And then when I was on Ozempic for that month, I wasn't enjoying food. 
Interesting. And I was like, I like enjoying food. I'd rather deny myself the enjoyment and then when I have it, enjoy it rather than like, oh, I don't even feel like eating. And then when I do eat, I'm not that into it. But maybe you yeah. fight through that. Maybe if you, you keep do, taking it. You do fight through it. You can ask Josh. I love, I love food. Right. Love food. It's yeah, an yeah. experience. It's the best. It's not I, fuel. I, it's I, it's I, everything. I think yeah. Food. I think food is is life. Like that. Going to restaurants and having a good meal, especially as you get older and you give up night clubbing or whatever. You know, like I couldn't give a fuck about ever going to a strip club again in my life. You know what I mean? Yeah. But a real experience. Like if I can fucking take two edibles, and like like go to like my favorite Chinese restaurant or my favorite whatever restaurant or even like go fast food or go Michelin star food. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I like, I like two types of food, right? I like fast food and high end food. I, I don't want to, I don't want to eat, same. I don't want to eat Applebee's and shit in the middle. All I've got there's this shit in the middle. That's nothing food. Right. No fast casual. What's your, yeah. fast food? what's your, what's your Chinese food order? Um, in Australia, it's different from what it is in America. But in America, I am partial to that walnut shrimp. It's gorgeous. Where they 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 just they just batter a shrimp covered in like mayonnaise and then can add walnuts <laughs> on it and sugar and yeah, just yeah, sweet yeah. that oh. that that like they call them honey prawns <laughs> in Australia, but they don't have the walnut. That's a that's a great one. But there there is a Chinese restaurant. The one in Vancouver is better than the one in Vegas, and the one in Vegas is phenomenal. Um, and there's one in Hong Kong, and I think there's about ten of them. Mot, Didn- Mot thirty two. Huh. I thought you were going to say Ding Tai Fung. Ding Tai Fung's good. Nice and time. I've, I've been to the original Ding Tai Fung in Thailand, and you wow. watch them. I love a dumpling, but the best dumplings I've ever had, Vancouver, Mot 32. Google Vancouver Mot 32. Wow. That fucking, and I just had it in Vegas, and they if you get the duck, you got to order the duck 24 hours before, mm. and then they just cut the skin off. And keep it all crisp and cut that into little slots, like so you can just eat the skin. And do you do the pancakes? Yeah, with yeah, the they make the pancakes in house and that stuff. Mop wow. Thirty Two is my that's my Chinese like that's my mic drop Chinese restaurant. Marshall, you want to give up your veganism hearing us talk like this? <laughs> <laughs> well, my wife, my wife's a vegan, but Mine she's too. Uh, she she eats. Um, well, she's a vegan she'll probably get angry at me for saying this because she <laughs> tries to sell herself as a fool but she's a vegan pes- pescatarian so she really is anti-dairy she doesn't eat cheese she doesn't eat milk uh, doesn't eat milk because she believes that they take the carbs away from the mother and all that. And, and since she has told me about it i do get it i do I, and also i as much as possible try to buy grass-fed beef free-range chicken all that type of stuff when i can because yeah, obviously i'm still having fucking in and out Sure. You know what I mean? Like, like you can't do it forever. Because if you've ever driven down those roads where those fucking corn-fed cows live, that's the fuck. That's the fucking killing field. It's all just. There's no grass. It's just dirt and they're on dust and they're just. It oh just, yeah. It's it hellish. Looks, so I, I, I believe in a food chain. I believe that we're higher than certain people, and there's certain animals that are higher than us if they get the fucking opportunity. There's mm. a lion that would eat me right away if it could. Right. Right. I believe that there's a food chain, but I don't believe that our food chain should involve cruelty to animals and leaving pigs in fucking tight. I don't eat pork. Same. Interesting. I gave up. I gave up pork, and and you know, I love dumplings. And every fucking dumpling is the, pig, pork the pig. The pigs are too. The pigs are too smart. The, the places they're, they're held is too too small. It's yeah, too much. I, they're, it's they're too, too much. They're too smart. If they leave them to fucking, and I know it would make it exorbitantly more expensive to buy. But if they had just pigs that were wandering around in fucking fields who lived their life and then at an appropriate age were were slaughtered in a humane way that we could, I would eat them. But they're, they, they're left in these little fucking cages where they can't move and they're pounded to, to get morbidly. There's no ozempic for the pig, man. Oh, <laughs> and one thing I know for sure, wild boars are dickheads. They're, By the way, pro- because they know. Well, they also, know. They they've all... heard war. They've heard war stories. <laughs> they've heard war stories, and See, they're taking they're, it out on they've us. They've infested America. Well, they because they were never. They, yeah, but there's, they're an invasive there's species. Very few animals on Earth that have no problems with humans. If 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 animals could talk to each other, the one thing they would all agree on is stay away from them. Right. Yeah. They'd look at humans and go, I, "Look, I, I've met a few nice ones, but for the most part, just don't go near those." Yes. Right. Now, the the there's very few animals that have no fear of human. The the 
the best one is, and this animal's a belter, right? I, I, I would have one of the, I'd have 10 of these in my house and clear up of them all day, no problem. The quokka is the best animal on earth, I've decided. What is that? Ben, you what know is, a yeah, I, don't know, I don't know what that is. Okay, no, I don't know what that is. It's spelled Q-U-A-K-K-A. -K -K and they come from an island just off the coast of Perth, Australia, called Rotnest Island, which the Dutch called Ratnest Island because they thought they were large rats. Hmm. They're a marsupial in a kangaroo style, but they have like a rat's tail. They're the size of a soccer ball. They have no fear of human beings, and you can take quokka selfies. Google quokka selfies. You'll see Roger Federer. You'll see... And they just sit next to you They're and cute. they smile. Marshall, you and... like these quackas? Yeah. They... Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Oh, they're cute. Yeah, they're the best. They're oh the best. And you, and you go... How is there not a quacka Pixar movie? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Nuts. There's, there's... Nuts. Pitch it. Pitch <laughs> yeah. it. We're done. Now, the quacka, you go off to Rottnest Island. It's a 40-minute uh, ferry ride from Perth. It's the only place where they... And they're not in danger. There's fucking tons of them on the... You go, people always go, I always take Americans and British people, I go, I'll take you to see the quackers, right, whenever I'm over yeah. there. And they're always like this, are we going to see him? And I'm like, you'll see him, <laughs> right? They have to put quacker gates on like the supermarket there. It's just a little island, like, like the convenience store, which are just knee high little plastic flappy doors because otherwise it would just be filled with quackers just walking around. <laughs> The, qu the, 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 the quackers, will, while you're eating, will come up and pat you on the leg. No. Yeah, oh, they have no fear of humans. And, and everybody loves And they, they live off, you're not meant to feed them because they live off of some root or something that's on that island. Mm. But that's, that's the animal. That's the animal. And they, they will, they, you, you can lay down next to them and take selfies all day and they'll look at the camera and they'll look at themselves in the camera. And they're, oh, wonderful animal. That's me, wow. number one animal. Do you do you have dogs? Are I, you a dog guy I or no? I grew up with dogs, but I don't have, because I travel so much as a comedian, I have cats yeah. because it's a more manageable thing as a road comedian to have mm. a pet. And my wife's a cat person. I like cats as well. I like cats. I like, I'm, I'm an animal lover. I, I, I like animals, but, um, but I grew up with dogs. But dogs, man, my father's 82, right? And he bought a dog. He, he didn't buy a dog. He got a dog from the shelter who was a bit older, who he thought may live. Because he doesn't want there to be a dog alive when he dies. Mm, right? Yep. Because, because yep. he, he, you know. so he, Somebody has to take it? Yeah, someone else has to take it. And what will happen to the dog? And he wants to make sure that the dog's going to be taken, you know. And so he got a dog um, who was already like 10 years old, thinking that maybe he only had 10 years left in himself. You know what I mean? The dog lived to be 20 and now my dad's 82 and he's like, yeah, no, I'm uh, too old to start with another one. No, maybe I, uh, if I got another one, it would probably outlive me. So I won't, I won't get another one. Mm. And I don't know if there's anything sadder than an old person burying their last pet. And he's had pets his whole life since he was a child. He's yeah. always had a dog. But he said, I can't have another one. I won't live long enough to see it through. Whoa. Uh, and, oh, my God. My heart is heart, heart wrenching. <laughs> yeah. Heart wrenching. We just, ben just we said just, goodbye to yeah. his. Go for it, Ben. We, we, we did. Our, uh, our King Charles Cavalier died three months ago, terminal cancer at six. Yeah. It was crazy. Crazy. Terrible. Mm. And we got, a, we got a new puppy 13 weeks old two weeks ago. Mm. And I got to tell you. Those puppies, no joke. You completely forget how hard a puppy is. Yeah, yeah. Completely forget. Their teeth are so sharp, yeah, yeah. so sharp, and they bite at your ankles. Yeah, yeah. I, I have I have battle wounds. <laughs> like, and you can't do anything because they're just trying to play. They're just but, trying to play. The battle wounds. Ben, do you, does this make you want to wait on having kids? No, I I'm pumped. I'm ready. Whenever um, are you having kids? The, the ba he, baby's not gonna baby's not gonna bite me. He's no, not gonna bite. Your baby 100 percent will bite you. Uh, my baby's bit the. Oh, f they, out of me. they bite. They, <laughs> what will happen worse is when you when the kid's about three and it starts preschool, your kid might get bitten like violently bitten by another child, or even yeah. worse than that, your kid might be the. F 
fucking biter. My son just yeah. got the shit bitten out of him. Right? Yeah. Did he? Well, my son also famously, and he talked about it, so I'll talk about it here. He got bit by a famous guy's kid. That's right. John Stamos' son straight up walked up to my kid when he was like a year old. God bless him. He's got the greatest son in the world. Billy, love him. And mm. just kids being kids. Kids being kids. Was yeah. like, let me take a little, let me take a little chunk out of Max's cheek <laughs> and went, ayah. And oh, he bit him, bit him on the face? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Ah, that's... I no mean, yeah, yeah. Billy then, was six a, months older than Max, so he was like a year and a half. Then as a parent, you have to go like this. Ah. <laughs> like, so so uh, my 11-year-old was a really good traveler for some reason. So so we have to have this baby that's just losing it. This this kid doesn't like fucking traveling, right? <laughs> yeah. So it gets like Matchbox cars and just like Hot Wheels cars. And I'm like, boom, boom. You know, I'm trying to keep him occupied. I turn around, he just gets one of the car, and we're, we're just sitting on the plane, he just throws it five rows in front of him. Bang! <laughs> Cast iron car, hits a, hits a bloke in the back of the fucking head, right? Uh, he turns up, and I'm just like, ah. Yeah. Da, da. <laughs> what? Because also, and people look at you like, well, are you going to do something? And you're like, what the f do you want me to do right and also as a celebrity i know i'm a very minor celebrity i'm not going as a celebrity but as as so someone who someone might recognize mm. what am i going to do fucking smack the kid like you know what i mean <laughs> so you just sort of go eh, anyway my point is yes your kid will fucking bite you <laughs> yeah at what age can you really start to reprimand them like where they understand that they did something I, wrong i think Two, you can start to like, you can start to go, that hurt me. That hurt my feelings. I'm sore now. Why? And like, because they start to get the smallest amount of empathy where they're like, yeah. oh, like that. And so like, but like my two-year-old adorable little fellow that he is, he, um, he, uh, he, 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 he understood when he got an owie, right? He, his mother would kiss it better, right? And so what he would do is he'd go up and smack his mother and then kiss her like to make it better. And, and she was she was so starved for kisses from him. She was like well up for it. Like oh god, he looks like he's gonna punch me. Like she's like yeah, an that's... abused wife. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's like an entire chapter in the psychology handbook. <laughs> she's yeah. like, but I enjoy the kiss afterwards. Yeah, but don't encourage him to. No, don't I get that. What I would take for him for a nice smack and kiss from the dad I never met. Hey, <laughs> the, the New York Post wrote the sex positions people are most scared of. A healthy level of physical intimacy is an important foundation in most romantic relationships. But I have opinions on this. <laughs> physical intimacy can sometimes be daunting for couples, no matter how long they've been together. And like, okay, let's see. What are they surveyed? A thousand men and women. <laughs> Uh, the scariest sex act is number one. People said public, public sex. Number two, oh, everyone's on that. That's just a bit of fun. Yeah, that's a bit of fun, and that adds a bit of excitement to your relationship. Lots of stuff. But the reality is that everyone, once you get into a relationship, you start off the relationship with 10, 12 positions trying to show off to each other, <laughs> and then you both settle into the three that you agree on. You got you have three. There yeah. Oh yeah, man, yeah. I gotta work. I gotta do better. There's there's certainly no married people that are having public sex. There's maybe there's like that's like a that's like a first three months of the relationship. Let's do something crazy, but then you settle in. Yeah, so it's not a. You, you've you've got you've got him on top, her on top. And then you've got the one that makes her come, the one that makes him come. So four, really, mm, right? right? And one of him on top, her on top might be double over into this one. And then there's ones, that, there's uh, variables that you use. Every, so it's like, I, I said this in a standard routine, my favorite position for me personally, and over the years, it used to be doggy, but over the years <laughs> I've bent over. And now my favorite favorite position is that spooning position where you, sure. where you lay in the spoon position. Sidesies. You, yeah, you, grab on, you grab onto a boob and you, you go hell for leather, right? It's a good position because you feel like you're doing a lot of effort, but you still get a pillow, <laughs> right? Yeah. So, <laughs> right? My dad's still got a very... Um, uh, uh, big sex drive bless him i i don't like it i don't like it because <laughs> i want mine to go away right i i i i went to get one of those i i, I had a testosterone shot once right where mm. they, you get low testosterone or whatever bill burr does a routine about like how he in traffic he doesn't want to have the fucking be like a 20 year old or whatever i feel the same way about 
they go, oh, your, your sex drive. And I'm like, I don't want my sex drive to go up. I right. want that thing to go away. It was, that, was part of, <laughs> that was part of the joy of getting older. Because right. I thought about sex less. Don't put that back into me. I just want a little bit more energy. I don't want to think about fucking anymore. Sometimes I do think about that because, like, I'm a sober guy and yeah. so gave up drugs and alcohol. I'm a California sober. I call it high and dry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So I, 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 I take edibles that change my life, really. It really changed my How life. How so? Because I... I was an alcoholic and I I took I, I don't think I was ever a drug addict to be honest with you. Mm. I loved drugs but I I used to go long spells without them and then you know but 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 if I was partying I was partying to get wasted. Mm. And so I was never I was never even a drinker that woke up but I never I, I still do this stuff. I have no interest in one drink or people do you want to go down the bar for one I have no interest in that. No. no. I just I, the, I I I just wanted to get wasted, just blackout drunk was was what I wanted to be, or or, or on coke too much. See, I used to think I was a great drinker. I wasn't. I was just taking cocaine with it. Sure, fair right. Enough. So everyone was. I was one of the great drinkers, right? I could drink on <laughs> stage. Like no, I wasn't. I was also on cocaine. Right? Sure. And then I gave up drugs, and then it turned out I was a sloppy ass drunk, like an embarrassing, like I was a lush, right? And it turns out I was probably always like that, but the cocaine was masking it. So I had to give up that, and then giving up that. Why the fuck are you smoking? You're not mm. even drunk, so you give up that. And then at the end, it's just, I just, I, as I said, I take an edible and I eat food and that's my vice. That's my vice. And then like I deny myself, I fast, fast, fast. And then I get high one day a week and I fucking go to town. How did you find, because you said you were, you'd were you have a drink on stage. How did your material and your performance as a comedian change when uh, you stopped? The, the best shows I ever did, I was blind drunk. And the worst shows I ever did, I was blind drunk. And, and, uh, uh, I do, I, I, I never have a show that really fails now. Mm. I used to have shows that failed because I was just ah, on the stage. Right. And, it, and it, sometimes there was lovely in the moment things in, you know, you know, no filter, you know, all those wonderful things. But there was, there was shows where I was almost like, you don't understand me. Like right. almost in tears, like getting emotional drunk in front of. 3,000 people, like really crazy shit, you know. Um, I, I, I don't regret it because it, it was such a big part of my life, was drinking was such a big part of my life. I called my specials after drinking. I, I had one special called Alcoholocaust and that was because... <laughs> <laughs> well, that was because... That was nothing to do... There's, no, there's it's other, a great name. There's I, other great Holocaust. Name. Great <laughs> name. No, it's incredible. Great name. Right. But I called it that after the fact because I got so drunk during the special, I woke up in the morning, I couldn't remember the special. And wow. then I watched the special back. It's my best special. And I don't remember. Well, I don't remember. Why, the, I don't why remember do you the, say that? Why do you? Because you were totally free, or just no, the quality just, of the had, material? It had the quality of material. I sort of found my voice before that. I was sort of, you know, very much just like uh, this is a good bit. This is a good bit. I didn't speak too much about my personal life or any beliefs or anything like that. I told a story about taking a friend with muscular dystrophy to a brothel, which I thought I still think is my best sort of 30 minutes of stand up where it's like, it's, it's honest and it's real and it's all, you know, and, um, I, and I, I spoke openly for 15 minutes about depression. And I, I also, whilst drunk spoke openly, you could see it was a person struggling up there. You could see mm. it, it's kind of beautiful because it's like someone like honest. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm having problems. Right, but I still wow. was funny about it, and it was clear that it was a bloke with problems who was just telling the truth. And so the rest of it was all there was a lot of a vibrato about who I was and tough guy comic in a leather jacket or whatever. And that one, I was just a drunk bloke in a flannel shirt having a go. You know, I just it's for me, it's my best one. It's interesting. Which special was that? Yeah, Alcohol Holocaust. It's only online, and I don't know who. Okay. There's someone else who put it. was on Showtime for five minutes. You know, this is yeah. back when specials used to air. They'd be on four or five times, and then they were fucking gone, you know. Netflix was wonderful for stand-up comedy because, you know, I was one of maybe 
10 comics who could go overseas and do gigs. And my, my territories were Australia, Britain, America, Canada, mm. right? And that was everything that I could do. And I, I was like one of the world comics, you know, and I'd go to Asia and I would do gigs, but it would be all white people who were expats, expats who yeah. used to live there. I now tour Asia, I'll go to Japan and I'll play in front of 2,000 Japanese people because wow. they've, they've watched the specials. Right, yeah. they're familiar then with The Netflix now. specials have happened and even if their English isn't great, they'll have the subtitles so they can sort of follow along and then they sort of, you know, so, and, and now there's, there's tons, there's, there's, there's 30 comics who can do that now right. and, and go around the world. And, you know, I just did a big tour and we did um, Iceland. Like, when the f*** am I? This f how the f*** would anyone know who the f*** I was in Iceland before streamers? And yeah. with, so cool. with the success of that special, when is the follow-up uh, Alka Hauschwitz? <laughs> <laughs> I, well, on, on the podcast for our final bit, we do something called What Are You Nuts? It's okay. our What Are You Nuts moment of the week. It's your gripes with people, places, and things. I'm what, if you meant to have sections and I just haven't shut up. Is that what's happened? No, no, been no we've been perfect. We have oh, one oh, section. It's this. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, right, 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 right. I'm good, 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 good. It's um, basically, yeah, whatever is current grinding your gears we'll we'll go first so yeah. that you have a second to think about it ben what do you yeah. got so so last night i i was invited to play in a basketball game it was a pickup basketball game a newish friend and i play on occasion like once every two months i'll go and play with my friends this is a group that i've i've never met before and i showed up it was at a high school 90 minutes and it's all these guys mid 30s early 40s and i'm playing with this guy and Everybody's wearing like normal athletic wear t-shirts. There's this one guy, 38 years old. He's mm. wearing a LeBron USA jersey and a Nike headband. And I just knew the second I saw him, I'm like, this guy is going to be, this guy's going to, he's going to be a problem. Mm. And he's fouling everyone. If somebody calls a foul on him, he's starting fights. He's, he's yelling. All of a sudden I'm wearing a purple, I'm wearing a purple shirt, like a purple Nike. It was a, it's a beautiful shirt. Sure. I'll show you guys a picture later. Athletes and I call, and I call the foul on him. And he said, if you call a foul on me one more time, this is your first game. You fucking tell a tubby you're out of here. And I looked at him and I said, I'm, I'm not, I, I like you're, you're 38 years old. You're wearing a USA jersey. You're wearing a headband. You just called me a Teletubby. I'm out of here. I'm out of here. So yeah. I walked out of the game and all I have to say is there are two what are you nuts is in this. The first is being over the age of 30 and taking a pickup game this seriously with people yeah. that you don't even know. This isn't a league. What are you <laughs> nuts? This isn't a league. It's not a league game. It's a pickup game in a high school. And the second thing is you have to throw away your jerseys after the age of 25. Unless so true. Even, like you have to throw them away. It's it. Or you can put them in a box and save them for your kids, right? Because Max would love to see an, an old jersey once he's uh, 11 years old and starts loving the Lakers, right? You can't wear a jersey. You can't wear a jersey to a game. You can't wear a jersey to a sporting event. Jerseys, throw them away. What are you, nuts? Uh, I, 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 I wear a Dodgers jersey every now and again. Every now and again. Every now and baseball, again. Baseball's different. I actually agree with you. A basketball jersey, you're not going sleeveless. Oh, no, 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 no. I You're going sleeveless. I can't wear a, a basketball jersey. It's crazy. No, a singlet. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. no, no, no. A baseball jersey, I'm with you. It could be cool, a T-shirt under it. For It's it's a different story. Ba I, basketball I, jersey. I have, no I have an Australian football jersey for the World Cup. Mm. The, the soccer jersey. Fair. That's me. I, they're me two jerseys. Also different. Also I, different. I, what I, are you nuts? <laughs> basketball jerseys. That's it. But but I would never play sport in one of these jerseys. I I also have a Cubs uh, jersey. I threw out the first pitch. Oh, that, that's that cool. terrifies me. Uh, How'd it go? Google Jim Jeffries' first pitch. It's not good. It's never good. It's not good. <laughs> it's never good. It's not good. Uh, I it's won't like, do it. It's like I never held a baseball. I was fucking. I was doing the Chicago Comedy Festival. I think like Louis C.K. did the game before and Patrice O'Neill did the game afterwards. Mm. You know what I mean? This is we're talking 15 years ago, right? And and so I'm like, I'm like, oh, they, they want you to throw out the first pitch. Terrifying. Yeah. Fucking terrifying. And then Chicago fans, it's the only footage of it is off someone's phone, and they're just like this. Go back to Australia. 
Good. I'm lucky it's Solid. Like really not. You were like, there were 80 shootings this week here, and yeah. I should go back to Australia. No problem, Chicago. <laughs> um, I yeah, they've. Uh, but I agree, oh, I agree with you. The, the the intense bloke who plays sport. At, okay, so so I'll uh, my son my son uh, was playing uh, a couple of seasons ago. So he was about nine. He was at a little league. He was playing little league, and there were the the, the pitcher was calling uh, pitches quite low, mm. like this, right? And one of the, the dad who gets a bit serious, right? And so the dad's like this, come on, that's not a strike. That's a ball, like this, right? And the umpire turns to look at him. Now, my son's the one who's having the dud calls called against him, mm. right? Nine years of age, turns to the umpire and looks at him and goes, he's got some money on the game. <laughs> so. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's what I like. Because like, a little kid should be like, yeah, that is a strike. No, you know, I like that he was chill. And just yeah. went, yeah, he's got some money in the game. I'm not worried about that guy becoming an adult because I, I know he's going to be cool. I will say it's brave of you, Ben, to wear purple. You shouldn't be called a Teletubby. Yeah, but, but does he know how but, much weight you lost? Right? He doesn't how, know. You how, know, the last time I could wear purple, I was nine. <laughs> now I get to wear purple and feel good about it. <laughs> did it have a little tiny screen in the in the stomach? It didn't. It oh, didn't. Then that's this completely is, unfair. This is not. This is a gorgeous Nike thin thermal purple. I looked unbelievable. Like it, there was no. The guy was just, and he looked terrible. He wasn't even. I said it was a headband. It was one of those Rafa Nadal tied in the back. The guy looked like such a loser. The, oh. the 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 uh, there's um uh when, you know when Instagram shows you things and goes oh this is happening that's happening uh d to make you feel old the baby who's the son from Teletubbies you know there was a baby's face in the sun sure that girl just had a baby that's upsetting wow. yeah that makes you feel old well my what do you <laughs> <laughs> my what do you nuts is I I get massages at the mall. I love a massage at the Is mall. Is it the best? I don't mall. I don't do a mall massage. But if I'm fucking in transit at an airport, mm, me too. No Express one. spa. Oh. Express spa. It's Fantastic. Love those people. No one knows it's you. Your face is in the fucking hole. It's gorgeous. Fantastic. You, you, you want to kill thirty minutes? I'm normally taking an edible for the flight anyway. I'm in a good mood. Right, oh. I fucking love a massage in a massage chair. A massage and mall massages I like because you don't know if you wake up Tuesday morning, you got a thing in your neck, mm. you got the backs all from the yeah, humping, yeah, the, it the hurts. Shaggers back. The shaggers back. But like <laughs> then if you go to a legit massage place, are they gonna have an opening? What time? It's a whole thing. You know there are gonna be people at the mall waiting to rub you for thirty to forty five minutes. So I go. Yeah, now, yeah. now I've done this before and I know. And I'm laying there. And the woman says to me, and I hear she goes, she's give me a nice massage. She goes into my ear. She goes, You want feet? You want someone to do your feet? <laughs> and now I, I'm not going to say it in an accent, but it would make the story way better. Anyway, so she goes, well, do you yeah, <laughs> I Just do the eyes then. Like, come on, like what are you talking about? <laughs> like, like, you might have, if you say I'm not going to do the accent, you've already done the accent. Jim, I would never. Now we're all doing the accent in our head. You're welcome. All right, come on. <laughs> Just painting the picture. So she's like, do you want, but I know they're tricks because mall massages, you know, they're cheap, whatever. It's fine. But then I've had this happen to me before. They go, would you like someone else? So now forehand massage, right? But you don't realize wow. now it's going to be double. Or you want the feet. Well, that's going to be an upcharge. All these upcharges. So you're like, wait a minute. Now you realize? <laughs> yeah. You just thought they were doing it out of the kindness of their heart? Of well, course. You assume feet are included in a full body massage, but then I would I would assume feet would so be included. So if you went to a brothel and paid for a threesome, you'd go, what? Double? <laughs> well, by yeah, the way, the four handed yeah, yeah. massage, but I the four handed the massage time. is different. The yeah. four-handed massage, that you have to assume is double because it's double the hands. But the sing the singular person saying, would you like your feet done? I personally assume that that's included in the singular full body massage. All I would say about the forehand massage is half the work for each masseuse. Anyway, I digress. But yeah, I was like, I just, I don't want it. So now she's punishing me. Okay. Mm. She's punishing me. Now, every time she touches fat of mine, my love handles, my thighs, she goes, ugh. <laughs> she's like, I'm like, I. Oh, like, now, now, <laughs> now he does the voice. 
And all, all, all I have to say is, what are you nuts? I don't want, I, I didn't want the upsell. Like, just let me be and don't like make noises when you're grabbing my fat. <laughs> don't make noises when you're grabbing my fat. A new special. There's a t shirt or a Beck. bumper bar sticker if ever I've seen one. Title. <laughs> Am I meant to come up with one? This is very short notice. But any, I mean, it can be small, large, something that pisses me off on the regular. In the in the airport, or, I'm sure there's a million things. Or just right now. Oh, okay. In the airport, let me go through my airport catalog of things that upset me. Um, uh, uh, well, with the airport security, right? I. I miss. Do you remember how you? Okay, so you used to. Okay, you ever been to Canada? Mm -hmm. Right, <laughs> you ever been yeah. to Canada. They don't talk or anything. So I was in an airport in Canada, right, and it goes a bit slower because they don't have a big, uh, fat, sassy woman yelling at you. I prefer an American woman going, "Please remove all your things from your tray. If you do not remove your things from your tray, you know how they get into you." Yes, they, I was in yes. Canada, and they weren't doing that. Mm. Right? They were just like, oh, next person, next person. Like this. And then inevitably, people had shit in their pockets because they weren't being yelled at. Uh, Canadian airports need uh, Americans yelling at them. They, they need the whip. <laughs> yeah, I like that. What are you, nuts? Yeah. Canada? <laughs> yeah. Yell at your people. Treat them like shit. And they make, like we do they, in the US. They make you show. In, the America, in America, you show your ticket, your ID, and then you're into the system. Right yes. now, I'm getting off watches and I'm taking off belts and I'm removing shoes and I'm in the machine. Right, right. In Canada, they check you after you've taken all your shit off, just before you go through the metal detector. So inevitably, there's people that are like, "Oh, my ticket's in my they, ticket, and it's going through the machine." Crazy. But oh, that's can, oh, that's incredibly yeah, stupid. Just move the ticket thing back one. I was just move it back one or or forward one after you've already gotten your stuff. It then putting it in the middle. That's also, nuts. Also, even let's just say this: what is the point of any of it, right? What's right. The, what's the point of showing your ID at the airport, right? There's you, there's no there's they, no they, purpose. It's it's, it's theatre. It's mm. not real. It's just theatre. No. Jim, thank you for coming on the pod. Do you uh, want to plug anything? Uh, I've got uh, uh, my podcast, the I Don't Know About That podcast. Um, and I. Um, wh when's this coming out? Uh, probably in, within the next two weeks. Okay, so I, I won't plug those gigs. Um, I'm about to do some gigs in um, Australia coming up. We've got an Australian tour coming up in July. Um, if you're listening there. And otherwise, I've just got shows around America. I'm always in Vegas or uh, I've got some shows coming up. I've got, a, I've got a big show coming up in December in LA. Is my next LA gig. So, so where? Uh, the, the Ace Theatre oh, downtown. Set. I only do it like once a year. So that's just been scheduled and it's already on sale for December. So get that. Get your, get your Christmas shopping done quick. Love it. Love it. <laughs> you guys, man, fucking what a joy. Thank I, you, man. Uh, uh, so fun. There, Thank two, you for coming on. Two ways great. podcasts can go. They can either be as annoying as fuck or fun. <laughs> and you guys are fun. I'll do your podcast whenever you want me to do your podcast. Thanks for we, having me. Thank you, we, man. We, we appreciate it. And as always, you can listen to the podcast on Spotify, Apple, wherever you get your podcasts. Watch it on Josh's YouTube. Rate it five stars. Otherwise, what are you nuts? Jim Jeffries, thanks for coming.